Mathematics crossing your eyes? Maybe Pocket Ronnie can help you. Okay, we're going to be doing what's called reverse distribution. When you distribute the distributed property, you are multiplying. Well, the opposite of multiplying in math is dividing. So, reverse distribution is dividing out numbers or factoring. Okay, when you are factoring out numbers, you are dividing out numbers. So, factoring is the same as dividing out. I will be using the word factoring. So, looking at negative 7x minus 21, we want to do the opposite of distributing. We want to factor out or divide out a number. Well, looking at 7 and 21, the most that I can divide out of each one is 7. But looking at my negatives, I can factor out a negative 7. So here's how I like to say, or here's how you're going to write it finally. You're going to pull out a negative 7. Okay, and you're going to, whatever you're factoring out or dividing out, you're going to write in front of your parentheses. So if you want to write it this way, that you are essentially dividing out a negative 7 out of each term, okay? But it has to be written out here in front. So when you divide a negative 7 out of here, a negative 7 and a negative, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 7 divided by 7, those cancel, so the only thing you have left here is an x. Here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 21 divided by 7 is 3, and you still have a y. So when you factor out a number, what you have in the parentheses is what you have left. So when I divide negative 7x by negative 7, I had an x left. When I divide negative 21 by negative 7, I've got, or negative 21y divided by negative 7, I have a positive 3y left. You can check yourself, this is the final answer, but you can check yourself by going back and distributing. When you distribute, you should get what you originally started with. Negative 7 times x is a negative 7x. Negative 7 times a positive 3y is a negative 21y. And I do get what I started with, so therefore I factored out correctly. Okay, look at number 4d7. Okay, we're not solving here. We're just using reverse distribution, just factoring, okay? So you look at negative 14, negative 21, and negative 42 and ask, what is the most that I can divide out of each number or factor out? And then I can factor out or divide out a negative 7 out of each one. So here's how you write this. If I'm going to factor out a negative 7, I write my negative 7 in front of my parentheses. Essentially, you are dividing each number by negative 7 which coincidentally we did it in the last one. So you write whatever number you're factoring out in front and then in parentheses you write what you have left. So if I do negative 14 divided by negative 7 that would be a positive 2 and then my Q that's what I have left. Here a negative 21 divided by negative 7 a negative divided by negative is a positive and 21 divided by 7 is 3 and there's my D that's what I have left on the left side. On the right side, if I divide out a negative 7, I write it in front, then negative divided by negative is a positive, and that would be a positive 6. So I'm not sure if Matthew C goes through the next step, but another step you can take is if you divide both sides by negative 7, do you see how your negative 7s will cancel? Remember, I'm trying to balance this seesaw around my equal sign. If I take negative 7 away from here, I can take negative 7 away from here and they both, it still balances. So my negative 7s will cancel on each side, but the way that works is if I divide this by negative 7, then I divide this by negative 7. The reason I'm dividing is because right now it's being multiplied. Negative 7 is multiplied to the 6. Negative 7 is multiplied to this parentheses and dividing is opposite of multiplication. So to get the negative 7 to go away, we divide it. That becomes 1, that becomes 1, and then you're left with 2Q plus 3D equals 6. And they're not asking you to solve it, they're just asking you to simplify it. Okay, we're looking at 4D8, 3X plus 4XY equals 7X. Okay, for now we're just looking at the left side of the equation. 
Okay, you look at the numbers first. 3 and 4. Is there any number we can factor out or divide out of 3 and 4? No. So then you look at the letters. X and XY. Is there anything that they have in common? Yes, they have an X. So we can factor an X out on the left side. So if you just factor an X out, you write your X out in front, and then it's like you're dividing X on both of these. If you factor an x out, 3x divided by x, your x is cancel and you're left with the 3. Okay, this is a positive divided by a positive, so you have a positive. Okay, you see how your x's cancel and you're left with 4y. And we have that on the left side. And when you go back and distribute it, x times 3, x times 4y should give you the original problem. x times 3, 3x. x times 4y, 4xy. And we're going to leave the right side just the way it is. Um, in the mathematical world, your x's will cancel on each side, but they leave in the book, they leave this as the answer. It can simplify to where you divide both sides by x, and the x's would go away, and you'd be left with that. But for now, we're just going to leave it as that. Okay, go to 4C11. Okay, on this one, they are asking you to solve for the unknown. There are two different ways you can do this. You can either just solve it for the unknown, just as it is with the numbers that there are, with what, how you already have learned, basically subtracting 30 to this side, then dividing both sides by negative 42. You can solve it in the form that it's in right now, or you can make the number smaller by factoring out um, a number. So you look at 30, 42, and 6. What is the number that they can all divide by? They can all divide by 6. So we can factor a 6 out of each one of these terms. I just show it like this, that you're dividing, because factoring means you're dividing. You're basically dividing a 6 out of every one. But when you do that, when you factor, you have to write the 6 in front. Then you write in parentheses what is left over. 30 divided by 6, that is 5. A negative 42 divided by a positive 6 is a negative 7, and then you still have your y. Don't forget your y. And then on this side, if you write out your 6 in front, and then what you have left in parentheses, 18 divided by 6 is 3. So if you go back to distribute, you should get your original uh, problem. 6 times 5, 30. 6 times a negative 7y, negative 42y. 6 times 3, 18. Okay? Then what you can do, do you see you can get rid of these sixes. Six is being multiplied to each side, so if you take it away, you're not changing the, the balancing of the equation. Okay, mathematically, the way you show it, six is being multiplied, so to get it to go away, you have to divide. Well, then you have to divide this by six as well, and your sixes cancel on each side, so then all you're left with is five minus seven y equals three. Now, you should be able to solve this with the way that you have already learned. Whole numbers on one side, letters on the other. 5 is positive right now, so to get it to go away, we have to subtract it. So negative 7y equals 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 7. That cancels. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so y equals 2 sevenths.